Hello, my name is Volkmar Fölzke, success strategist, mentor and coach and author of the German book Unternehmens Fitness Raus aus dem Mittelmaß, which means translated business fitness escape mediocrity. Welcome to this week's uh, video about a very special topic. And this topic is what the heck are you selling? And uh, it might sound a bit weird, this, this um, headline, because you think, okay, we know what we are selling, if we are selling anything at all. And this is another topic, because I think everybody's selling all the time something. But uh, let's assume you are in a business, what is very likely if you're watching this video, and you, uh, to a certain extent, are somehow involved in selling something, directly or indirectly. So you know, might know what it is, it might be a product or a service. I want to give you some extended idea that you might have heard in the one or the other way already before, However, I see it hardly applied. When I'm working with customers, I see very often it's not applied. It's just not, it's, uh, people don't think in their daily lives in this way. And so this is what I want to ignite always with my videos. It's not always entirely new, but it's a reminder of saying, okay, we can s see things uh, differently. And by this, we can advance. We can escape mediocrity. We can become outstanding. So having said all this, here's what I'm talking about. I give you some real life examples that come into my mind all the time and especially it's, it's in retail business, hotels, restaurants, if you have things like this, but also machinery consulting. You will see just quickly. If I go to a bakery, we have some here around where I live uh, in Lausanne, some small bakeries. I always wonder how they all can survive, but obviously somehow they can. That's not the topic of this video. Um, however, when I go there in them, most of them, are nothing uh, have nothing special what they are doing they are selling bread they are selling bread or cake or something like that but that's not the point what is a bakery selling just think of it for a moment especially if it's a smaller one they are selling for example healthy nutrition that's even also too short i think what they are selling is a good feeling when i go in there i want to have the feeling that's really great that's really special that's homemade stuff it's authentic it's not from industry like in the supermarket it's something special do they give me this feeling i can tell you most of the time no they don't there's no pride about that they give a feeling to their customers that it's something special they get there Right? That's one example. The other thing is, uh, for example, hairdressers. I was recently to a haircut, maybe you see this. And whatever you think about this, that's not the topic here. Uh, but the thing is as well, uh, um, uh, they, they are talking about what tools should we use? Should we make it with scissors or um, somehow shaving or whatever? I mean, I don't care. What they're selling to me is as a customer is a better feeling afterwards, more certainty when I'm in front of other people because maybe it look, doesn't look so weird and so wild, so I'm a bit more civilized or whatever it is, right? Maybe um, I need less time for washing my hair if it's not too long or something like that. And women and men are very different in perception, but definitely it's never the haircut. It's never the service itself. Um, a third example, more from the B2B business, because uh, this is more relevant, I think, to, to you and more like chances are. Uh, even if you sell machinery, what are you selling? Something like a machine for producing something. And I know this really, I know this business. So the thing is, we're not selling a machine. You are selling the certainty, for example, and, and the good feeling of the one who purchases it. It might be the CEO, it might be the purchasing department, it might be whoever, the production, uh, head of production. Um, they are purchasing this, purchasing this machine with a good feeling that this is for the future the right thing. So they say, ah, it's really good. When we purchase this, now our worries are gone. It's really good. We can increase our numbers. We can work on that, right? So that's one thing we, we sell. We don't sell the machine. Sounds obvious. And last but not least, the example, because it's also business I am in, cons consulting and coaching. I am not selling consulting and coaching hours, never. What I sell is transformation. And even more specifically, I sell inspiration. I sell new ideas, good thoughts, things that people don't think of without me, that they can go to a new level in their life and their business, that they open doors that were closed to them that to, to enlighten the blind spots that they have in their business and their lives. It sounds so dramatic. However, this is the thing I'm selling, to be honest. The, the people are buying this and paying this money because they get this transformation or the chance for transformation with me and with my colleagues from coaching and consulting, this is a thing. So just these few examples amplify already that selling is not the product or service. And maybe you've heard that, maybe you know, think, yeah, yeah we, we all know this. I wanna give you very uh, uh, specific homework that maybe you have done, but chances are you haven't because I never heard that somebody has done this. Just very, three simple steps that you can apply. 
uh, just as an idea. Number one, if you look at your business and customer interaction, just find at least five, five occasions, cases where your customers were not entirely happy with what you sold. And preferably don't find things that are related to your product, that the quality was not good of the product or service itself. So more the things, the customers were not satisfied, they were not happy. So why is that? What, what cases were this? I'm sure you find five cases. I'm absolutely sure. I mean, if not, then congratulations and hurrah, you are really in a, in a perfect business. But chances are you are not. There are cases that say, no, it didn't work out completely. And even if maybe they didn't even become customers, maybe there wasn't a process before something that didn't work out. So that's number one. Then um, on a scale one to 10, rate each of these um, cases and um, when 10 is the highest and one is the lowest in each of five categories very simple very quickly five categories um, number one in how certain it made your customers feel certain certainty increased certainty how much did it increase or inspire them to to see something else so in other words variety enhanced them their their life or their business with some variety something new innovation that they didn't have before and didn't see before can be very powerful, very, very powerful for purchasing. By the way, very often ignored too much. That's just another topic. Number three, um, how much did it help your customer to belong to something that they feel good with? And even in B2B, this is a very powerful thing. This is why companies buy from the same suppliers over and over again. There's very often not a rational reason. It's very often this feeling we belong to them. There's some belonging. So how much do you amplify this and enhance this by your, by your sales? And then the fourth criteria, how much did you make, and this is a biggie, that's a very big one, how much did you make your customer more important, feeling more important? And you know, if you're on sales, you know how important this is <laughs> to make the customer feel important. And number five, how much did you make your customer feel that they grow, that they become something better? It can be that you, uh, that you help um, somebody in the purchasing department to, be, to enhance the career by purchasing from you, something like that. So if you have these five criteria and rate one to 10 on each of these five criteria, your experiences where you um, disappointed the customer, look where you are and where you see then patterns. And then of course, that's the second step. So you rate this and then number three, very simple. You can write down just three things to each of these cases where you can simply improve a little bit the customer experience. By what can you do this? It's not a big exercise. It sounds not so weird and, and so big, but it's not. It's just five cases. If you have only three, it's also okay. Um, then in each of the five categories that I just told you, how much did you uh, act to, to enhance the life of the customer or the, the business of the customer? And then number three, just find three ways, maybe only one, but be better three ways to each of the cases, how you can improve these five categories. And again, it's very specific. So that's a bigger exercise, simple, but um, maybe not easy to make. So I wish you good luck with this exercise. And I hope that helps you just to see sales in a different light. And until next time, I wish you whatever I do, drive your business with passion.